Welcome back. Let's get after it. Good morning, Julian. Yes, some high profile friends of tech executive Bob Lee have taken to social media to voice their love for Lee, also their shock and frustration over the news of his death. They say that he died in a San Francisco yesterday morning, though San Francisco PD has not yet confirmed that Lee is the victim. The Chronicle, though, making that connection to a attack that happened here along Main Street at Harrison yesterday at 2.30 a.m. Now, Lee, no doubt, a major force in the tech world. He was the chief product officer at MobileCoin, a cryptocurrency company. Before his current job, he acted as CTO of mobile payment app Square and the creator of Cash App. Early in his career, he also worked at Google. Other tech executives, friends, and colleagues have used social media to post tributes for Lee. The CEO of Abra sharing Lee he was a father, adding in part, he was a generous, decent human being who didn't deserve to be He was in the good part of the city and appeared to have been targeted in a random mugging slash attack. That's a part of MMA fighter Jake Shields' post, and he described that. And in a statement emailed to ABC7 News, his company, specifically the CEO of MobileCoin, saying, Bob was a force of nature, helped to birth Android and Cash App into our world. Moby was his dream, a privacy-protecting wallet for the 21st century. I will miss him every day. Of of course, we are still looking into the circumstances of Lee's. For now, it's clear the tech world and beyond are mourning a beloved friend. Now, San Francisco police have confirmed a stabbing happened in this area yesterday morning. Uh, only identify. I tell you, I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding this guy's untimely early demise. It does seem quite suspicious that he seemed to be such a spearhead for the safety of people maintaining their own information whenever it came to banking. It's just a little odd, a little suspicious. It seems like it's always the good ones that go early. The sign has been going viral the past week and there's actually a really sad story behind it. The man behind it is David Libinson. Back in the day, he was working with Kim Kardashian and Kris Jenner on an app that he co-founded called Sensorgram. During one of their meetings, he pitched the idea of Kim Moji. Kim and Kris loved the idea, so they verbally agreed on a 60-40 split. David later then gets a call asking if he trademarked Kim Moji. He said no, but they were going to soon, but then Kim's team said, don't trademark it, we'll do it for you. And they did, but they did it behind his back without his name on Kim it. Kim then goes on to launch Kimoji and makes millions of dollars. David sues her for $100 million. Kim then countersues for $300 million knowing he can't pay it off. This then forces him to drop out of the lawsuit, in which now he then owes Kim Kardashian $400,000. Attorneys, stress, her time, all that stuff. Because of this, David lost his whole family, lives out of his car, and works two jobs just to pay this off. And now since he has nothing to lose, he's trying to have his voice heard. Isn't Kim Kardashian supposed to be like a voice for those who were unjustly locked away and had their lives taken from them? And now she's doing it to someone else? If this is true, it kind of puts her in a new light. <laughs> opinion on that one it's the simple ones like that that look the most realistic what do you think image of a cyclone seen from space on our flat earth from 1972 these images taken over a five-hour period were taken from the apollo 17 spacecraft nasa still deny this footage so that's supposed to be a dome over a flat earth that extends out past the dome it's supposed to be impenetrable, according to Flat Earthers. We're not supposed to be able to get past it, but they believe that the Apollo mission went past it and took these photos. Let me interject and ask, are you subscribed? Because I drop content like this every single day. So if you're enjoying it, hit that like and subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. With a condition called synesthesia, can see bright colors when they hear music or taste flavors when they see certain shapes or numbers. They could even smell words. This neurological condition alters a person's perception of reality. Scientists believe that synesthesia results from an overabundance of neural connections. Our five primary senses, hearing, sight, touch, taste, and smell are controlled by different parts of the brain with limited cross-communication. In the brains of people with synesthesia, 
anesthesia, the walls are broken down and there is more communication among these brain regions. As a result, the information gets jumbled. Synesthesia is extremely rare and most synesthetes are born with it. It's estimated that only 4% of people in the entire world have this condition. More recently, studies have linked the condition to certain genes, leading scientists to believe that synesthesia may be heritable. Interestingly, some researchers believe that we all have synesthesia to varying degrees. It is simply that some of us are more aware of the sensory stimuli. That's pretty cool to, to know that we all have it to some degree. Um, I wish I knew to what degree I have it. It's interesting to think that everyone experiences sensations slightly different at some slightly different degree. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I knew about the uh, seeing colors thing because there's several famous singers or um, you know music producers and stuff that, that have that. Uh, but I didn't know about the taste and colors, and that's that's pretty cool. Every time I put out an album, for some strange reason, I always lose somebody close to me. My pops, it was jams, it was my sister. Like, I always lose somebody close to me, so, you know, I feel like, you know, some crazy, like, jinx or something. Without being superstitious or just paranoid, I just you know, take a toll. I take a toll out of it. It's just do. Does that remind anyone else of that David Dobrik video we just watched like a video or two back? That shooting star? No, it's not. It's going up and down. What is that? That's not a plane. What is that? That can we run? Run? Run hang that on, way? Hang on. What on earth is that? Something that's shooting out in front of it now. There's yeah. two of them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my God, guys. You are looking... I don't know what you're looking at, but they're, they're UFOs. If ever there's an unidentified flying object, that's that. Can we go that way? Can we go that way? There's two of them flying next to each other. Can we... Oh my god, you guys, I don't think you realise how lucky you are to even witness something like this. Look at them! Oh my god. What is that? Can I quickly go that way a bit? Yeah, go where you want, mate. I'm running over. But I'm on the golf course. Can I try and run over like really close? That, I've never seen anything like it. Dad? Yeah? Is that a road there? Yeah. I'm just a guy on the field because that will be right above us. Paranormal call on camera. <laughs> this one's you. <laughs> Look at this. Very fun video. I'm not really sure what I think it is. I'm leaning more towards its drones. Uh, I know I've seen drones that can leave trails behind them. I don't know what the range is on those. Uh, it's hard to gauge from the video just how high up those things are. But based on the movement and the quick speed and everything and the fact that they stayed in the same general area, they weren't zipping around that, that crazy. They look like drones. This might be the creepiest photo ever. And I know you're like, Khalil, it's just a picture of Woody Allen and his wife, Suni. Well, he adopted Suni when she was 10 with his ex-wife, Mia. So yeah, he's basically Suni's father, who's now her husband. And they've also now adopted kids together. I don't see how more people aren't aware of Woody Allen, how the story's not more widespread. And I definitely don't see how people are so eager to work with a man with that reputation. <laughs> Hawaii is a land of strange and bizarre creatures. Nearly every species of caterpillar in the world is a herbivore, a plant eater. This caterpillar is not looking for a leaf to eat. His claws are better suited to a more lively meal. A plant hopper. The best way to catch its prey is to launch an ambush attack. To stand a chance, the caterpillar needs to find some better camouflage.
tell you, when I watch this, I can't help but think of that scientific theory that states that because the oxygen levels were so much higher back in the Jurassic periods, that we had insects that looked like that, that were the size of dogs and even up to the size of cars, just because they were breathing so much more oxygen. That's terrifying. Demonstrates that he will not take power uh, by, uh, if, we, uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he... Uh, under the legitimate efforts of uh, our Constitution, does not become the next president again. Anyone know who this uh, guy is at the Trump arraignment yesterday? Watch his eyes. Watch his eyes. Definitely not normal. Um, there were a few of him there like this. Uh, very obvious uh, that we're in a spiritual or some type of warfare going on here for sure. Look at his eyes. That is not normal. Not normal. Can anybody tell me who he is? Secret Service? What was his purpose on being there? Because his eyes, something is going on there. Definitely. Right, that looks like one of those skin masks if ever I've seen one. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely wonder if that's what that is, if that's someone wearing a mask and that's why the head shape is so abnormally large. Not to make fun of this gentleman if that's what it is, but man, what a creepy looking fella. Watching up behind me on that ditch. I'm sorry about that, he was, he was doing good. Oh, there he is, okay. It's, there. Uh, Oh, cool. got a shot of, of one. That's just a really well done CGI. It looks good enough to be in a movie, I would say. Um, maybe even an A-list movie. Like it's that realistic looking, uh, but still, there's just something about it that says I'm not really here. Mr. Armstrong, Bart Several, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Will you put your left hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked on the moon? Gentlemen. Mr. Cyberl. Yes? <clears throat> if you really walked on the moon, why would you not do that? So why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument that put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Cyril, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fifth Bible. Really? Well, no, it's a real Bible. You have the opportunity to have $5,000. The meeting is not open. Well, you have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Please I have a tape. It'd be fine. Why don't you I swear won't. to... Why not? Why won't you do it? So why don't you put your hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked yeah, on the moon? Mr. Cyril has made a fool of himself in front of the world. Mr. Cyril, you do not deserve answers. I think that Mr. Cyril was not making a fool out of himself, but out of uh, Mr. Armstrong. This one I actually do lean more toward UFO than I do drone, just simply because of the distance that they would have to fly those drones if they're out in the middle of the ocean. And of course, we don't know how far away they are from shore, but uh, just imagining that they're out in the middle of, of uh, the ocean fishing or, or drilling for oil or whatever it is that they're out there doing in that boat, uh, I would imagine they're a pretty good distance out. So I don't know what the range is on a commercial drone, but that was a lot of them, either military craft or UFOs. Then one is caught. It's the signal the others have been waiting for. by vibrating bodies, the hornet at the core of the bee ball begins to overheat. The bees have the advantage, a heat tolerance two degrees above that of their enemy. At 46 degrees Celsius, the aggressor is roasted alive. 
Wow, that is insane. Just two degrees difference. They can survive two degrees hotter. That's insane. Hiding in the pages of the Devil's Bible, there is a secret book called the Codex Gigas, which is a massive medieval manuscript created in the 13th century. Well, legend has it that there was a monk named Herman the Recluse who was in prison for breaking his monastic vows, and in exchange for his freedom, made a deal with the devil to create a book that would contain all human knowledge, thus giving it the nickname, the Devil's Bible. The original book contained 620 pages of various medical and magical text, but 12 pages were later torn out and hidden forever. Some people speculate that the missing pages contain secret knowledge, and that when it was used in the past, caused disasters, ranging from a fire to the Black Death. Even though a monk who was trying to steal the book was struck down by lightning, many people are still in search of the book. Uh, I'm gonna say if this book exists, and someone has it, it's probably in the hands of the Catholic Church. It's where most lost books are, I would imagine. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. I hope you're uh, enjoying all the videos I've been putting out. I'm trying to do one every day. That way there's always something new for you guys to enjoy. And if you come back here tomorrow, I'll be here waiting for you. See you tomorrow.